So this is lockdown two developing much like lockdown one. Good morning. Merry Christmas! Brad, it's November. What? That, that's why we're meeting early, because we need that extra month to get this little project we're about to start work on done. Tell me more, Johnny. So, every Christmas my family asks me to brew a Christmas beer, and we thought that it was about time we brought that wonderful, infuriating family Christmas tradition to the big screen. So this year we are brewing our very own Christmas special. Should we try what I brewed last year? Yes. So what we need to start thinking about is what we want our beer this Christmas right. to be like. And I thought, you know, the, the first couple of years that I brewed it, I brewed American Pale Ales. That's all my family would really touch. Safe. Yeah. And then last year, I I broke out of the mould and I brewed this, which is a coffee Ooh, porter. Blimey. But let me know what you think. And then we'll have a chat about what, what we think a classic Christmas beer is. And maybe watch some of our previous videos to really nail down what it's going to have to look like. Cheers. It's going to oh, cheers. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> hey, that coffee's still there. It smells great, Johnny. Yeah. Grab yourself a mince pie. Hey, man. Strap in. And let's watch last year's Christmas beer special. Let's Merry do Christmas, Christmas beer geeks. geeks. So this is a Bel uh, Belgian-style brown ale, so kind of doubly in vibe. It's incredibly dry. It tastes like ash. Sam. Like a burnt turkey. Uh, and lots of roasty, biscuity, caramelly malts. What have we learned from this video, mate? Everything's dark. Mm-hmm. All I can do is agree with this much mint pie in my mouth. Let's go back to 2018. <laughs> uh, so it's a Christmas creek, so it's a 3.4% kettled sour uh, with what kind of cherry? Sour and sweet cherries. Christmas. I'm way less grey. Uh, and it's got red currants, prunes and raisins. So it's, it's a chocolate, chocolate and, orange. and orange stout. So it's basically... I love a chocolate egg. Orange. That's Easter. I think for 2018 we can learn that there, there's, there's got to be some fruit in there. Big in this time. one there's all kinds of fruits going on, particularly in the Blitzen from Gypsy Hill. So we're going to add fruit to this beer. Hi guys, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. And a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Come on then. Oh! Love that Christmas sauce, man. One day I'll get two. So the reason I got this one, good and carolous, mm -hmm. um, is because at Beer Merchants, our partners, this sells the best of our Christmas beers. A good and carolous, you know, their, their standard beer is a good beer, but why is the Christmas one selling so well? Key point from 2016, Johnny. Yeah. It's got to be Belgium. It's got to be Belgium, absolutely. In the year that we left the EU, we, we went hard with the Belgian beers. So maybe a second mince pie while we discuss what style and what we're going to add to it. It'd be rude not to you, mate. It would be. It well, is November after all. <laughs> <laughs> so we know it's got to be Belgian. Mm. We know it's got to be dark and boozy. Yeah. Which to me says it's either a double or a quad. Yeah. Now, if we went for a quad, mm. it's going to take a long time to ferment okay. the condition. And I don't think, even though we've done it as early as mid-November, uh, I don't think we can achieve that in time. Okay, so we're ruling out a quad. I think we are. Okay. Which means I think we've got to go for a double. Makes sense, mate. Yeah. And hey, it's, it's a mon monastic beer. It's, it is. Jesus would approve. Jesus would approve. Jesus would approve. So if we're going to do a Belgian double, mm. so a dark, really fruity, dates, raisins, banana kind of flavour, what can we add to that fruit and that spice to make it a Christmas double. Move Move five. Five. Okay, how do we get the essence of this glorious mince pie into a beer, into a Belgian double? Well, there's what we'd call the Omnipolo approach. Right, yeah. Which is to put, just put mince pies in. Just crunch them up, stick them <laughs> in. But lots of issues with that. Mm. One, it's disgusting. Two, the fat in the pastry is going to ruin head retention. It's going to it's going to cause all kinds of havoc. Mm. So I think we focus on the fruit. We're going to get sweetness anyway from a double. I think that'll take care of the pastry and the sugar. Yeah. So I think we add raisins and currants. I'm into it. Like, just talking. like a, just like a mince meat. Yes. And then because we have to make sure that when we add that, because I'm thinking it probably go into the fermenter. 
we've got to make sure it's it's sanitary. Right. Usually you do that by soaking these fruits in, in vodka. What if we did that in rum? Whoa. I cannot tell you how pumped I am about this, mate. 2020 has been the shittest year ever. It certainly has. We need to turn it around. We need to make the best Christmas beer ever. Well, that's no pressure <laughs> on me to save 2020. <laughs> um, I'm pretty nervous about this recipe. I've never brewed a Belgian beer before in my life. Uh, and I've never brewed with fruit before in my life. So there's lots of new things what happening. What could go here. wrong? <laughs> what could go wrong? Well, I'm going to ask somebody that. I'm going to find an expert. I think I know exactly who to speak to. And that's Jimmy of Unity Brewing. Good morning, Jimmy. Morning. Thanks for uh, taking some time out. Could you sort of talk me through, like, roughly what a double should be and what yeah. perhaps my malt bill is going to look like first? So it's like the classic multi Belgian uh, ale, right? So um, I guess similar to a brown ale of, of, of normal like kind of English or American brown ale style, but with that more of a focus on yeast and uh, kind of interesting more, uh, I guess a malt character with a little bit more depth to it. That extra malt depth that we're expecting from a Belgian double, that is that going to come from some, some different malts from like Special B or yeah exactly you know so the belgian malts are pretty unique special b is like is is the one you know it's a really really unique malt and probably the thing that separates a, a belgian brune or a double or quad from a lot of other dark beers in that you, that you can get you know because mm -hmm. i mean that has that really classic raisiny kind of flavor to it doing a slight mint meat vibe so it's raisins and currants technically yeah, gonna cool. soak that in rum yeah um would, would you add that like after primary fermentation, like rack it into a secondary container with that? Well, when we, when we've added raisins, we've done it um, later in the boil. Right. So we can uh, draw out those sugars a little bit. And also like cooking something like that as well, you're going to get, um, you're going to concentrate those sugars a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, and bring out a bit more of that dried fruit character from them. Right. Uh, but where you're soaking it with rum, you can add it in fermenter if you want, but I would just make sure you give it plenty of time for the yeast to do its job on them. Yeah. Uh, what you don't want is any uh, residual fruit sugars sticking around after you've bottled. <laughs> yes, don't so want any fruit bombs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, you can, I, I would do a little bit of both. Okay, Jimmy was super helpful, so now I have to come up with my recipe based on everything that he told me. I'm really keen to still make this our Belgian double, so I really want loads of rum and raisin to it, but I also want to remain as faithful as I can within that parameter to the classic. So I've been doing some reading, my own book. Of course, the most important thing I need to do is try some doubles. So I know West Mal Double inside out, it's one of my favorite beers in the world. So I thought I'd give it a trap a go because I haven't drunk their double in a long time. Pouring lighter than I thought it would. Doubles generally in my head are a little bit darker, but that's a lovely rust kind of color uh, and a really lovely off-white head. Caramelized bananas, raisins, that little hint of nail polish, which in a very small quantity, you get it loads in shimmy, but on this it's a little bit, it's nice and floral and, and really sort of gets your synapses firing. Big old aroma. Yeah, and dry, effervescent, so I need, definitely Jimmy's right, I need dryness, I need loads of carb, and that's what lifts it, that what, that's what stops it being too sweet. I'm thinking, I've got lots and lots of rum and raisin going in, or at least I intend to, so I reckon I might put a little bit more roasty character in there just to balance that out, so a bit of uh, carafa like Jimmy suggested. So I'm gonna get that recipe over to Malt Miller. They always deliver super quick. My timelines are incredibly tight. I've got just over a month uh, to brew this and deliver it to my man Brad to, to find out what he thinks of it and we're hopefully going to put it in our Christmas video as well. So a month compared to probably about the seven months that these beers usually take. Loads of time in bottle, loads of time in tank. Uh, yeah, good luck to me and Godspeed Malt Miller. Okay, it's Christmas brew day and my Christmas jumper... No, it doesn't fit, does it? The other thing I'm worried about not fitting is my mash into that little brewing machine. So this is the biggest mash-in I've ever done. It's eight kilograms, it's pushing what the grain father can do. Um, 
and it's full of amazing delicious malts uh, thanks to lots of internet scouring and of course the help of Jimmy. It's also full of other things that are going to be going into there during the boil, during the mash, during the fermentation. There's so much extra stuff that's going to be added to this beer, very much in the Christmas tradition. It is the season of more is more. The one I'm most excited about though is this. So this is Special B. This is what gives so much of the character to these slightly darker Belgian beers. Um, it's going to be basically caramelised raisins and stuff like that. Stuff I'm going to be amping up with everything else that I'm adding. Let's get that. <laughs> I mean, it smells like, we used to call them squash fly biscuits. Those like really buttery, sweet, uh, crystallised sugar on the top biscuits that had raisins in. Really raisiny. Yeah, and obviously that, you know, it's still quite starchy. We haven't converted those sugars, but definite raisin bread kind of notes. I could eat that whole thing, but I, I need all 800 grams. I have just hit 65 degrees, so it's time for me to mash this giant in, and then we'll start making our rum and raisin tincture. So I've added all my sparge water. You can probably just about hear in the background the lovely water feature tinkle of uh, the last bits of sparge water trickling through into the boil. We're at 88 degrees now. 88 miles per hour. So the time has come to sort out the rum and raisin element, or rather the mincemeat kind of element of this Christmas beer. So what I've done is I've chopped 125 grams each of my currants and of my raisins, and these are the ones that are going in with the rum. So I'm gonna put that into my kilner jar. It's time to talk about the rum that we're gonna be using. So obviously, practice what you preach. I wanted to get something small batch, independent, uh, and delicious and artisanal. So I went down to my local bottle shop and got me some East London Liquor Company Demerara rum. Now I didn't want spiced rum. Lots of spiced rums, they're using nutmeg, they're using vanilla, all these kind of flavors that I'm actually hoping to get from the yeast. So I want to let the yeast shine as much as it can given everything else that's going on. So this is just a straight up Demerara dark rum. So I think it's probably time for a quick sample. So in some parts of the world, I've come across people adding a little bit of spirit to their first runnings, to their really sweet wort. It's known as the brewer's breakfast. Uh, so I'm gonna do a little bit of that for the rest of the filming. It's also gonna help me check that this rum is right, that my wort is tasting good. Now it smells like raisin bread soaked in rum. Perfect, absolutely perfect and lovely and warming. Right, so all I need to do with this is cover this with my lovely rum. So I'm just gonna seal that up. And that's just going to sit in there for the next couple of days. So that is the stuff that's going in fermentation. I still need to sort what's going into the boil and we're just coming up to it. So I need to weigh out my hops and get chopping the rest of these bad boys which are going into the boil. Okay, so there's about 30 minutes left of the boil. So in goes my Belgian candy sugar. And also my chopped up raisins and currants and all that lovely juicy flavour. Okay, so that's another brew day over. My fridge is, well, just below 18. It's ready for this to go in. Let's have a little chat about this amazing yeast that we're gonna be using. So this reputedly comes from Westmal. This is the original Westmal yeast. So, Lots of people on the internet would tell you under pitch it, ferment it warm, get as many esters as you can. Jimmy disagreed. He thinks you should ferment it at about 18 and let it ferment a little bit slower, create those esters slowly. Don't create too many of them because it can end up a little bit rough. And I'm gonna trust Jimmy and he says, let it free rise towards the end. So this is going in three or four days, in goes the rum. <laughs> that's, only, that's only the start of it really. We've got a lot more to do before this beautiful double it's ready for Christmas.
Ri-di-di-ri-di-di-ri-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-di-